Good morning. Welcome, everybody, to the Marysville Tulalip Chamber of Commerce Business Before Hours event. Very excited this morning. We've got some great professional development information coming your way. So, without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to our chairman of the board, Jack Schumacher. Good morning, everybody, and welcome. Um, we do have a pretty good program today with uh, our guest speaker, Andrew Ballard, and our uh, sponsor today is uh, uh, Snow Isle Libraries. First of all, I'd like to introduce some of the elected officials that uh, we may have here this morning. Um, if you are here, raise your hand and hold your applause until uh, we're completed. Mark James, City Council, and Tom King. Welcome. We also have a few uh, chamber board members here that I'd like to introduce. Again, raise your hand and hold your applause until the end. Al Aldridge, if you're here, raise your hand. Becky Mulholland, and I know you're here, Becky. You're only supposed to raise your hand, Becky. <laughs> Jessica is here. Pedro Gonzalez. And I think that's it. First of all, I'd like to introduce uh, somebody who's really kind of special to me. Uh, she's my boss, so. Um, uh, Snow Isle Libraries today is uh, sponsoring the event, and uh, John Lynn Wolf Ivory, the Executive Director of Snow Isle Libraries, is here to speak. Please help me in welcoming John Lynn Wolf Ivory. Jack had asked me if, uh, if I wanted to use a handheld mic and a, or a regular mic, and I said, oh, the handheld mic, because I know probably you can't even see me back here. But um, I do exist uh, at five, uh, five feet tall. But thank you for um, allowing me to speak just a little bit about the library. Um, currently, um, the library is in the process of um, asking our community, our voters, and actually that would be you as well, um, to consider a levy lid lift election. And that is on the April 24th ballot measure. And um, I, one of the questions I get right away is why, um, why now? Um, we've had a lot of property tax issues and why is the library asking for assistance today. And it's a very simple reason. Um, in 2009, um, we um, passed, or you all helped us pass a levy lid lift, and at that time, we promised that we would not be back asking for additional assistance for at least five years. So we've moved uh, much longer than that, and we've been able to do that by uh, careful management of our cash flow. And at this point, um, we no longer have funds to stretch to do this. So how much um, is the cost of this? This is a, a, excuse me, a nine cent per thousand increase on your uh, library ta uh, levy left tax. And that equates to, if you have a, a $300,000 home, that's an additional $27 uh, a year. And again, um, we will not be back with another election until I'm retired. And um, that's at least, uh, so that will be happening uh, pretty soon, but we probably won't be back for election for at least another eight years. So thanks for the few minutes, and I'm excited to hear Andrew uh, speak as well. So thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. 
That was brief. I wasn't ready for you to be completed already. So. Um, we have a couple options for uh, sponsor uh, events here at the uh, uh, Business Before Hours event. You can give a five-minute presentation and uh, put information on the tables. You can uh, do a co company recognition on all marketing and mail outs. If you want to do any of this, uh, just contact Ann. And if you have any questions, contact Ann at the uh, cham chamber. Next, I'd like to introduce Andrew Ballard. Uh, he's our guest speaker today. Andrew is the president of Marketing Solutions, a Snohomish County agency that develops research-based growth strategies. He has over three decades of, ex of, of experience with specialties in marketing, research, strategic planning, brand development, and advertising. Andrew has helped hundreds of organizations from startups through Fortune 500 companies achieve breakthrough growth. He's a respected author, educator, keynote, and TEDx speaker. His articles on marketing strategy have been published in business journals through all 50 states. His book, entitled Your Opinion Doesn't Matter, has been endorsed in both corporate and academic circles as being innovative and insightful. Andrew is a part-time faculty member of the University of Washington. Please help me in welcoming Andrew to the stage. Look at that. That's a... I guess I am the AV guy. You are very good. Thank you very much. Jack, thank you for a wonderful introduction. Uh, he read it just the way I wrote it. Very impressive. So it's great to be here. I have not spoken to this body for about 10, 12 years. Has anybody seen one of my talks? A couple of you, and you showed up anyway. That's Bless your heart. That's great. So um, I've got about 25 minutes I'm going to go through. The room is so large that I'm not going to do a Q&A, but I'm going to stay after longer. And um, I'll give you the email address. If you have any questions, I would be happy to address them just as my thanks for you being here. So, four secrets to growing your business. As Jack mentioned, this is um, based on uh, my book, Your Opinion Doesn't Matter. The uh, subtitle is really more important, and that is, it's your customer's opinion that counts. My wife actually named the book because she's been hearing me share with prospective clients before we will accept a new engagement. She's been hearing me say this for 30 years, that unless you're willing to write a check and buy up all of your own inventory, your opinion doesn't matter to me. It's your customer's opinion that's going to lead us to uh, rapid acceleration uh, of your enterprise. So there's only four things that you need to do right to be wildly successful at revenue acceleration. And it's very simple. All you have to do is target the right market with the right message through the right media at the right moment. What could, I'm glad you're laughing. I'm full of crap up here. Really, it, it's just about uh, market, media, market message, media moment. Um, the fact is that even if you only get one of those four things wrong, uh, your whole, whole system crashes and you're just not going to achieve that kind of uh, any significant growth. There's a story in the book that illustrates this point very well. It was a story about a young, not a young, a married couple in Minneapolis. And they grew very weary of a long, icy, just a really frigid winter. And so they made impromptu reservations to do a vacation in Florida. They wanted some heat. So ironically, they made reservations at the same hotel they honeymooned at 20 years before. So because of hectic work schedules, the husband flew down on a Thursday with the wife to follow the next day. Husband checks into the hotel, and he noticed there's a computer in the room, right? Well, that's new from 20 years ago. So he decides to email his wife, letting her know that uh, he arrived okay. Without realizing he left one letter out of her email address, he hits send. At that very moment, a widow was coming home from her husband's funeral in Houston, Texas. He had been a pastor there in the local community and had passed um, from a heart attack two weeks before. She gets home and she's accompanied by her adult son. When they get home, she assumes that loved ones would be sending her notes and emails, those who weren't able to attend the service. 
So she opens the first email, she reads it, she screams, falls right to the floor. Her son goes running into his mom's room, and sure enough, she's laying on the carpet. She's breathing, but she had obviously uh, fainted. So he turned his attention to the email, and the email read this, from your loving husband, subject, I've arrived. And the email went on to say, I know you're surprised to hear from me, honey, but they have computers here now and they allow us to email our loved ones. And uh, I just want you to know that I arrived and everything is okay. And by the way, I've made all the preparations for your arrival tomorrow. <laughs> so it goes on to say, I hope your trip is as uneventful as mine. P.S. Sure is freaking hot down here. Okay. So we had the right message, the right media, and the right moment. We targeted the wrong market. So anyway, that's kind of a silly demonstration, but it's so true. We have to get all four right. Message, usually I ask the question, but which of these four are most difficult uh, to achieve? It's really messaging. Developing messaging that is compelling and relevant is the most challenging part. And given that I'm doing a 25-minute overview, what I'm going to do is uh, offer you a, a free white paper that explains how to do research-based messaging. I just want to give that to you as a thanks. Uh, we'll come back to the QR code at the end. But the bottom line of revenue acceleration, right, and, and the function of marketing is to gain attention. We've got to get attention. So, hopefully I have your attention. My guess is I'm the first speaker that's ever shown you a picture of a disturbed baby emu. But that will imprint on your brain, and you will never forget that image. So now that I have your attention, let's go ahead, jump right in, and unpack um, these four secrets. The first, uh, defining your market niche. This is essentially about um, going after the right market. So we don't assume that uh, we're targeting everyone. We need to segment the market universe. Think about the market universe or everyone that we're trying to uh, appeal to as a pie. Segmenting is just cutting that pie into pieces. And it's based on the 80-20 rule. We've all heard of this before, um, uh, but in, in general states, it's about 20% of the market that generates 80% uh, of your revenues. The same is true with the productivity of staff. This is Pareto's law, you know, the 80-20 rule. So the mistake that I see most small businesses and large businesses make is that they fragment their budget trying to appeal to the whole market. But if they concentrate, if you concentrate your budget on that 20% that's most responsive and profitable, your return on investment is going to be significantly higher. The other point I want to share is the notion of being a specialist versus uh, a generalist. The organizations, and this is especially true with small enterprise, you know, those under the 100 million range that are really trying to be known as a specialist in their segment to their niche market, they're the ones that usually win more business. The next part of targeting the right market is, in fact, targeting the right segment. After you've divided your um, market universe into uh, pieces, um, we want to target the most profitable and responsive group. And we do that by profiling the different market segments so we really know who they are. And based on that, that'll give us the information we need to be a little bit more purposeful in our targeting. So the path for this is very straightforward. First, we're segmenting the market universe. Keep in mind the 80-20 rule. Second, we're going to profile your target market because after all, we want to go after a niche, right? We don't want to fragment our budget over the entire marketplace. Last, with those profiles, we'll be able to target the segment that's most responsive and profitable. And I will show you a visual path for everything I present in these four secrets. And all of them have the same algorithm. One plus two equals three. When you segment the universe and profile the targets, then you are able to effectively um, target a segment that's most responsive, and that's what leads you to the right market. Next, we're going to talk about the right message. This is the one I wanted to offer, that free white paper. The best way to develop messaging is by using the voice of your customer. The best way to gather the voice of the customer information is by asking your best customers. Why your best customers? Because they're the ones you want to replicate, right? Not every customer is considered equal. Some are more profitable, and some are more responsive to our offerings. So 
What kind of information do we want to gather from our best customers? We want to know what their motivation is to buy. What is it that drives their behavior? So, you know, we're asking questions like, what do you value most about your experience with our brand, our product or service? Next, it's always useful to understand what may frustrate them. Uh, the idea there is you have an opportunity to improve, right? If you don't minimize the frustrations, they're highly likely to switch brands. Uh, they'll defect. And then also, one of the conversations we have uh, with our clients' customers is, you know, what's the most important deciding factor? So you have brand A and brand B. What's the single most important factor that determines which brand you're going to choose? Those are very useful conversations. It's also important to study the competition. You cannot position yourself and develop key messages in a vacuum. You've got to know what your competition um, or alternatives to your product or service are offering. Otherwise, you can't distinguish yourself. So essentially, you want to know the strengths and weaknesses uh, and the positions, what they're trying to be known for, of those key competitors. Uh, and it's real simple to do website reviews, and you get a lot of good information. Another thing we do is secret shop. We stage a scenario, usually by phone, where the competitor of our client believes that we're going to become a customer because we're, we're finding out about the product and service, how to purchase, what the process is. And you get a lot more information through those shops than you would through simply reviewing uh, a website. And then finally, uh, the question I get all the time is, what, inf what other information should we be gathering? And I always say the four P's of the marketing mix. Does anybody know what the four P's of the marketing mix are? I've got one of my students here from the UW. I bet he does. Anyway, um, they are product, price, place, and promotion. And you want to get information on their product, their pricing. Place is just a function of their location or delivery system, right? If they're e-commerce, the landing page on their website is, in fact, the storefront. Do they have a brick and mortar facility? What, how do they put the product in the hands of their consumers? Um, and then of course promotion. How are they getting the word out? How are they gathering uh, or garnering attention? Hopefully not with a disturbed baby emu. So um, I'm giving an extra slide on this. I'm doing fine on time. Um, because as I said, this is the most important and most difficult step or of the four secrets. Essentially, with that voice of the customer data and with the competitive intelligence we gather, what we're trying to do, do is to develop a unique value proposition. Those three words are, are very purposeful, unique, and that you distinguish yourself from your competition. Um, valued, that distinction is then, in, in fact, valued by your, your target market. And one of our elected officials here is council, uh, count, um, County Council Member Terry Ryan, I see down here in the front. And he knows this is true in the political world, too. We need to distinguish ourselves, especially in economic development and trying to attract more residents and businesses. But um, the proposition is just the key message. So we've got to be unique, distinct. That distinction has to be valued, and that's what drives the proposition or our offer. Essentially, this is how companies in my world, position their clients. And essentially, we're trying to get you to position yourself as the first, the best, or the only. And our preference is only. We always go for only. First, since the internet got popular in the mid-90s, um, first mover advantage is not as strong as it used to be, like um, in the Industrial Revolution. Best. I don't know about you, but I've seen TV commercials where both McDonald's and Burger King say they're the best. I think they're both horrible. Uh, they had to come here to eat and they get some real food. But um, so that's not always a, a strong position. But being the only, okay? So there's 1,000 marketing agencies in the Puget Sound area. I'm one in a thousand. But Marketing Solutions is the only one. In fact, we're the only one in the entire country that develops research-based growth strategies for small businesses. What we do, you can get for free from Madison Avenue. But if you don't have $100 million a year to spend in advertising, they're not going to return your phone call. So how do we do this? It's the un unique value proposition. Then we create a tagline, OK? A, a very um, top of mind tagline is 15 minutes can save you 15% or more on your car insurance. 
Okay, we all know that. It's, they've been beating that into our head for years. Uh, their $800 million advertising budget a year doesn't hurt. But the idea is you want to have an emotional connection to what matters to uh, your target market. From there, you're going to develop a short set of key messages that are in support of your unique value proposition um, and uh, that slogan. And typically, you're only developing one to three key messages. You develop a whole portfolio, and it becomes noise. We need to focus in on the signal that's most relevant to our target market. So the path. First, we're going to do customer interviews. We really un want to understand their motivation for purchasing. What's going to drive their behavior? From there, we're doing the competitive study. We want to know how our competitors are positioning themselves so we can understand how we will be unique. And then finally, that's what leads us to develop our unique value proposition, our UVP, and the tagline that goes along with that. And as with targeting the right market, when we um, uh, are looking at the right message, one plus two equals three, that data from customers and competitors help us develop our UVP, and that leads us to the right message. I know it's like drinking from a fire hose. This is typically a 90-minute presentation, and this is my short version. If anybody would like a copy of uh, this PowerPoint, it's yours for free. I'll leave a stack of business cards up here, grab it, and I'll just email it to you. I want you to get value out of our time together. Third, selecting the right media. So the common mistake that we see is that people choose media, uh, you know, the, the, the channel that they're going to push their key messages through, be it social, digital, or traditional, uh, based on cost. And that's absolutely the wrong way to do it. I remember um, walking in, um, uh, one of our clients, uh, newer clients was a car dealer, this is some years ago, walking in and they wanted us to put together a new advertising program. And um, I, I said, well, how are you, what are you doing right now? And he goes, well, I'm buying this radio station. I knew that was the wrong station based on the research of their target market. I said, why are you buying that station? And he says, two reasons. One, it's my favorite station. He thought his opinion mattered, right? And two, I got a great deal. The rep gave me a you know, really good rate. And I said, well, if that advertising was working so well, why am I here? Oh, yeah, I guess it's not working well. So I, he insisted, now, I don't want to change the radio station. I want you to fix my advertising. And I said, Mr. General Manager, that's what's broken. Grab a pad. How many cars you got in the service bin? We go down to the service bin, and I said, let's check the radio station of every car that's tuned to every car in your, it had like 25 cars. His radio station didn't show up once. There was one station that showed up nine times out of 25 cars. We moved all of his budget to that station, and we did a pre-Memorial Day sale. Again, we wanted to kind of separate ourselves from the noise. They had the biggest sales weekend that they had ever had in their 70-year history. He was choosing the right channel because he made the mistake of thinking his opinion mattered, and he thought a great rate would result in a strong ROI. Usually the opposite happens. So the questions you're going to ask to determine the best media, you know, the pay-per-click program, the social media push, um, print advertising, um, sponsoring Snow Isle libraries, hitch your wagon to that. I mean, I'm telling you, it's, uh, we've done that, and we've just uh, felt very blessed for that partnership. But you want to know how they find you. Um, you want to know what media they consume most often. Okay, I gave the example of going into the service bay, and we had this one station that really showed up. Those are important things. And by the way, these questions can be part of your best customer interview, right? Um, also, um, among the media, you want to identify which is the most cost-effective. Not the cheapest, the most cost-effective. I could get you to work with my agency and have you spend $1 million a day in advertising as long as I delivered $1.2 million in return because you'd make over a $1 million a week net. So you get the idea. So the way to do that at no cost to your organizations, you don't need to hire me to do this. Um, you ask your media rep for the CPM of your target market. CPM in advertising speak stands for cost per million. Uh, excuse me, cost per thousand. M is the Roman numeral of a thousand. So you want to know the cost per thousand. And your rep will give this to you. But if you are targeting uh, a media outlet that's reaching 100,000 people, 
But if you're targeting married women, 35 to 44, that have children, that might represent only 20% of that total marketplace. Make sure your rep calculates the CPM only on that 20%. Don't give credit for the audience that isn't your core market. Your rep will do this, they'll do it for free because they have the ratings information. It doesn't matter what the CPM is. You're gonna compare their CPM to the other advertising opportunities and you're gonna choose the channel or channels that have the lowest cost per thousand, the lowest CPM. So, here is the right path to choosing the right media. Your target market, right? You need to know demographically and geographically who you're targeting. From there, you take a look at the media that have a high concentration of your target market. Some media outlets are, are just not sensible, right? If I'm targeting a senior community of 65 plus, I'm not gonna be using Snapchat, right? It's a raw, it's not a good fit. Um, although the senior um, demographic is the fastest growing in social media consumption. It's a, a very interesting trend over the last two years. But um, based on, I got a clicker that works. Based on the media, look at that, I've had way too much coffee. Just means we're gonna end five minutes early. Media audience, right? So which is really attracting your niche? And from there, you can develop the cost per thousand or CPM formula based on efficiency. Obviously, your buy is gonna be within a budget you can afford, but we're doing it based on efficiency. And as with the previous two paths, one plus two equals three, which will lead you to the right media. Right media, that's code for delivering a positive return on investment. Frankly, for small businesses, uh, most advertising fails in generating a positive return, so we're losing money. We don't wanna do that. So the last secret is about timing, the right moment. When to deliver that message that will actually generate the greatest response. So there's a macro cycle and a micro cycle. Um, I, by, by the way, I explain all of this in the book. I'm not trying to sell the book, Amazon for 18.95. But um, the seasonality of your business is a macro cycle. You're looking over you know, like quarters or a full year, right? But not all of us have uh, seasonality to our business. There's no seasonality. Now, I'm a business service provider. There's no seasonality. Um, but if you're selling Scott's Turf Builder Plus, you're not going to advertise in December. You'll be advertising in, in March. Maybe a little bit later this year because it was such a sucky winter. But you get the idea. But that's a macro cycle. Most of us are involved more in micro cycles, especially if you're in retail. It's also true for service businesses. But you want to fill in the business gaps. The micro cycle can be literally framed in hours, days, or weeks. It, it's a much shorter cycle. The best example I can give you there would be, um, well, they've got a couple really nice restaurants in here. Uh, you go to your favorite restaurant. Maybe it's a high-end restaurant. Ha anybody ever seen a two-for-one offer? We see those all the time. Are those offers ever good uh, on Friday and Saturday nights? Never, because they're at capacity. They have a weight. But they're always good Sunday through Thursday, and you can get really good offers if you get in there before 6 p.m., um, so the idea is they're filling in the gaps. And you can use those examples to figure out what uh, timing would work for you. The third thing is that you want to consider your competitor's timing. I gave the example of the car dealer, um, how in fact we didn't do a Memorial Day sale like 75% of all car dealers do. We did it two weeks before, a pre-Memorial Day sale. So we were the only ones out there promoting it. So our share of voice was very high. That was part of why we had such success. Of course, using the right media also helped. So that's an example of both media and moment. Um, but the idea is if your competition is zigging, I want you to zag so your share of voice is higher. Next, and finally, to wrap things up, we want to determine the best scheduling pattern. And flighting is the best, for, especially for small businesses or uh, businesses with a limited budget. So let me give you an example. Um, a concentration program is when you're advertising all the time. Okay, that would be like Geico. A concentration, vertical concentration, would be putting all of your promotional dollars into just one or a couple times during the year. Okay, that's like a Nordstrom model. Flighting is when the example is you're two weeks on, two weeks off. Two weeks on, two weeks off. And the reason that's so popular for small businesses or limited budgets is because it gives the illusion that you're always promoting your brand, but at half the budget. 
I don't care. Uh, we actually have um, uh, a program right now where we're doing exactly that. We're concentrating all of uh, the budget into two weeks a month, and it gives a much higher concentration. But people don't think, oh, they don't advertise two weeks a month. They think, oh, they're advertising again. So the right path for your timing essentially is you want to determine your timing based on the macro or micro cycle, right? Are we going to follow the season or are we going to fill in the gap? Uh, competitor timing. If you're following the season and you're selling um, Valentine's cards, it's very difficult to not be promoting the same time that um, your competitors are timing. But we try to get out in front of it and be the first one in with the offer. But you can't be too far away from the point of purchase. Otherwise, they might forget your offer. Um, uh, competing timing is very important. Also, determine the schedule. What pattern is going to work? You got the budget to do constant or um, uh, continuous all the way across, or maybe you just promote vertically in a concentrated pattern. Or if you want to keep your share of voice out there, the flighting is probably the best. So, as always, one plus two equals three, and that what equals uh, the right moment or the best timing for your promotion. So let me just summarize really quickly, and then I will close out by sharing a bonus fifth secret. Um, so the idea is we've got to target the right market, right? By segmenting the universe and targeting the most responsive niche. Next, we want to be uh, sending out the right message. We want to gather customer and competitor data and answer the question, why you? So why should I buy from you rather than somebody else? That's where your unique value proposition comes in. Third, uh, the right media, based on what customers consume and based on efficiency, not based on cost. And finally, the right moment, right? We want our timing to be informed by whether we're seasonal or we're filling in the gaps, again, the macro or micro cycle, what our competitors are doing, and the optimal scheduling pattern. So typically I do Q&A. Um, but it's such a, uh, a large venue, and to be honest, I, I can't see anybody here. Uh, usually, I'm really easy to see. I'm the bald guy where the light is reflecting off my head. But there's the email address. I'm going to leave a stack of cards down here, and I really encourage you to email, email me. I'm happy to do some free email consulting. But um, let me close out with my fifth secret. It's okay I get done five minutes early, right? It's getting done five minutes late. Jessica is going, yeah, that's okay. Um, and she's right. So the fifth secret, I'm going to pull all this together with one secret that if you do this really well, you can forget about the previous four secrets. The wow factor. And this is how I close out my book. And I'm going to give you the short version of a story where my family experienced a wow factor that we've never forgotten. And we have driven millions and millions of dollars of business um, to this company. So, in 2003, my wife and I are, are becoming empty nesters. Our kids are in their mid-30s. I know, I look young. You don't have to say it. Um, and we were going to happily spend our kids' inheritance. And so we were going to do a fairly pricey design-build uh, architecture landscaping thing with water things, waterfalls into the hot tub and all of that. Anyway, it was a pretty expensive project, so we got bids from three contractors. And um, during the day, we were going to meet at dinner to look at the three bids and make a decision. Right before that, though, in the afternoon, I'm in the office, and I'm typing away. I'm a hen pecker, so I'm, I'm looking at the keyboard. I look up at the screen, complete gibberish. Not just my usual typos and misspelling. I mean, it looks like hieroglyphics. And I realize I'm feeling a little strange. The ceiling is actually moving forward. At least it appears that way to me. I'm getting a little freaked out, so I decide to call our family clinic. Problem is, I couldn't dial a phone number I had dialed 100 times before, based on our kids growing up. I couldn't get my fingers to hit the right keypads. I finally get through, and the charge nurse interviews me for about 30 minutes, excuse me, 30 seconds, and says, Andrew, hang up the phone, call 911, and go to emergency. So I got up, I started putting my coat on, and while I had lost all my fine motor skills, I was able to walk and get my coat on, and so my macro uh, coordination was still there. So like an idiot, I drive myself to the hospital. I know, I'm still hearing about that from my wife. Not smart, 
thankfully, I didn't hurt anybody. I got to the hospital okay, and I, I get into the emergency room. There's a line out the door. It's a four-hour wait. But legally, they have to triage you as soon as you get there. So I'm being triaged, thinking, this is great. And two minutes into this triage interview and blood pressure and whatever, an orderly comes up behind me with a wheelchair. And they take me, immediately take me back to a private room. Okay, that's a bad sign. Two hours later, I'm being wheeled back from a series of CT scans, and uh, they had found my wife. And as I'm getting wheeled back into the hospital room, uh, my wife is walking in, and my doctor is right behind the gurney. And he walks up to my wife, shakes her hand, and said, Mrs. Ballard, would you please have a seat? That's the second bad sign. He goes on to say, Andrew, you have a brain tumor the size of a baseball. You're stroking out, and if we don't perform emergency surgery, you're done. So to be clear, emergency brain surgery takes about a week or two to get going because you've got to get the right operating theater. You have to bring the team of surgeons together. It's, I had two brain surgeries in 24 hours. The first one I had to be awake for. That's a party I'm not going to share. But the point is that they had to put me in a near comatose state. So the 10 days we waited between my diagnosis and the actual set of surgeries, I was checked out. That left my poor wife and family having to deal with all of this. First, we didn't know if I would live. Second, if I lived, there was an 80% chance of left side paralysis. Right side brain tumor, left side paralysis. Um, so Sandra is contacting all of our creditors, looking for payment vacations, things like that. Mortgage companies were great. But part of that um, process, you know, uh, power, healthcare power attorneys, living wills, all the stuff that we hadn't done, um, part of that experience for her was contacting those three landscape contractors. Sorry, brain tumor trumps landscaping. It's not going to happen, ever. So obviously things became okay. I, I say I'm back to baseline because I've never been normal. But three months into my recovery, um, my wife comes, I'm still in bed at this point, my wife comes into the bedroom and it was obvious she had been crying. And I said, what's wrong? And she said, I just spent five minutes on the phone with the owner of Edmonds Landscaping. And not once did he talk about the contract or the proposal. And in fact, he never even brought up landscaping. He just wanted to know how our family was getting along. I mean, that literally, we said, wow. So the point of the story is, if you can make your customers, your staff, your supply chain, your family feel the way that landscape contractor made me and my family feel, you won't have to do anything else. You'll be wildly successful. Did we ever uh, do that uh, design build landscape thing? No. We ended up building a house in 2008. But we have referred over 500, well actually, probably several million dollars. I have shared this talk to over 100,000 people. I go around to different corporate events and around the country, mainly in promotion for the book. And so I've told the story to probably over 100,000 people. The ones locally have generated quite a bit of business for them. So that's kind of uh, my commercial. I'm going to close. Um, so think about the wow factor, what you can do to literally get your customers to go, wow. Uh, you deliver value and exceed expectation. You'll never wake up unemployed. So here is the QR code. Um, that's the web page. By the way, this web page is not accessible from our website. This is a private page. And the only way to get there, and all you do is put in your first name, your email. There's a little checkbox down here that says, uh, you know, if you're interested in breakthrough growth and you want a free consult, you can check that box. But then hit the submit button. And here is the QR code. So you, it's big enough for your smartphones can read that from some distance. For those of you that don't have uh, a smartphone, just give me your business card. And if you want to do to take advantage of that free consult, just write yes on the back of your business card. I'll also put a stack of cards up here. Anyway, I really appreciate uh, your attention, your great audience. Thank you very much. What a great speaker. I always enjoy listening to Andrew. I've uh, heard him a few times. He, uh, he was a speaker at one of our uh, Snow Isle TED Talks, or TEDx events, and uh, he's also worked with our organization. He's a wonderful person. Uh, now we're going to get into our networking uh, part of our program, and I'd like to introduce our MC, Todd Fullman.
Well, thank you for the applause. I haven't even said anything yet, so that makes me feel good. Thank you. Huh? Hey, yay, Pedro. So it is super wonderful to be here with you today. Everyone looks so good and smells good, and it's just going to be a wonderful, wonderful Friday, all right? So uh, we're going to go run through this real quickly. I'm sure we're going to be here uh, until about 10 o'clock, so um, all right, some of you are going to leave early. Good. Um, we're going to do some table networking right now, and if you've been with us for a while, you know what we're going to do, and for those that are newly here, let me introduce what we're going to be doing. For the next uh, few moments, we're going to go around and introduce ourselves to other members and guests at our table. We're going to spend about one minute sharing who we are, what we do, and what we like to do, and why we're so great at what it is that we do. So some of you, I know, came here for that networking opportunity to get to, new, get to know new people. So we're going to go ahead and do that right now, and we'll spend about one minute, and then I'm going to go up there and ring the bell. Ding. And when you hear that, it's going to be the next person's turn. If you're at the table with just a couple people, I would invite you to maybe join a table that has three or four so you can make a nice little group of six. That's up to you. So let's go ahead and we'll begin that one minute right now. All right. All right. Here's the bell. You know, I hear that bell and it reminds me uh, back in school about a gentleman named Pavlov. You heard that guy before? Raise your hand if you heard the guy Pavlov, you know, the guy in the bell and dogs salivate and things like that. Well, Pavlov walks into a bar. Pavlov hears a bell ring and he thinks, damn, I forgot to feed the dogs. <laughs> yeah, okay. Blame the bell. Don't blame me, blame the bell. All right, thanks for laughing. Out of pity. Okay. Next, uh, we're going to be doing introducing new members. New members. All right, this is a good thing. I'm going to uh, introduce the businesses, and for the individuals that's representing that business, if you come over here and stand to my left, and then we'll bring you up, and you'll have about a minute to tell us how great you are, who you are, and what it is that you do. Okay? First, we have Immersion. Is Immersion in the house? Please come up. Stand over here to my left. Real Property Management. North Puget Sound, okay, all right, go Mariners, all right, uh, Marysville Modern Dentistry, yes, come on, I know you're here, uh, yes, right over here please, thank you, thank you, how you been? Good. Excellent, excellent, uh, we're looking for Marysville Grocery Outlet, Grocery Outlet in the house. Grocery outlet, they're stocking shelves. Good. Be there this afternoon. Uh, Puro Clean. Puro Clean, Puro Clean. Yes. Yes. Thank you very much. And Jay Z Marketing. Where is he now? Oh, he's over there. He moved. Come on up. Come on up. Thank you. Thank you. And Whistle Stop Sweet Shop. Whistle Stop Sweet Shop. I just love saying that. All right. You're first. Thanks. <laughs> I'm JR. Uh, I opened the escape room in Marysville. It's called Immersion. Nobody knows what an escape room is. Uh, higher. How's that? <laughs> uh, basically, we give you the start of a story. You and your group have about 60 minutes to try to complete the story or be lost forever. Um, <laughs> we haven't had any missing people yet, but it's a lot of fun. Uh, friends, family. Uh, we've had couples come in for date night. Families are a big one, group events, things like that. We're constantly running promos on social media, hometown values, uh, anywhere, anywhere I can get my foot in the door because uh, we're the furthest, furthest north escape room um, other than, I think there's one in Anacortes, but we're, one, really. yeah, not really, we're the best. No. <laughs> so uh, check us out, check us out on our webpage, immersion.game or on social media, constantly running promos and thanks. Hi, I'm Sarah Claussen. I am the operations manager of Marysville Modern Dentistry. We are a brand new local office. We're a Smile Generation Trusted Dental Office going in right across I-5. So if you guys have seen that construction going on right over 36th Avenue from Hagen, that's us. Um, so we would love to have all of you come on in. And we also specialize in same day crowns. So those are Sarah, two and a half hours. You come in, get a full person crown, you leave with it the same day. 
So we'll also have all of our specialties coming through. We'll have an oral surgeon, periodontist, endodontist, so one-stop shop, get everything done. And I have a table over there. There's also a free raffle for free in-office whitening if anybody's interested. Just pop in your business card or fill out the little slips on there. So, thank you. My name is Adam with PuroClean. My wife and I are both owners. We just opened up in the last year. Um, so how many have you guys had or known someone who's had uh, property damage due to water, fire, or mold? That's a lot. <laughs> so the, the stat is this. One in 20 houses will have some type of water damage this year. So there's a lot. Uh, we do uh, emergency cleanup, emergency restoration due to uh, water, fire, and mold um, disasters. We go up, clean up the mess, get it back to uh, back, ready to be re restored back to pre-loss condition. So uh, we have a Facebook page, Google, um, and you know we're we're ready and we're ready to do the job right. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. I'm Lynn Reed, and we're with the Whistle Stop Sweet Shop. My husband and I, Steve, over there. We just opened up in February. We're just now finishing up getting our kitchen and ice cream in. For right now, we provide um, amazing fudge made in a beautiful uh, fudge kettle that we didn't know what that was when we opened up. We now have a fudge kettle. We make 70 pounds of fudge at a time. Nobody has tried it and not come back. So we're doing good with the fudge, but they do keep asking about the ice cream. So our ice cream comes from Ellensburg, Washington. A fourth generation dairy farmer makes it. So that's gonna be in in the next 10 days, so everyone's anxious for that. We have Huckleberry products from our home state of Montana. Wow, anyone, come on. <laughs> Those are selling really big, and then we've got all the stuff for kids. So anything sour, crunchy, sweet, that's delighting the kids. So very family friendly, and we wanna welcome you all for just a free piece of fudge if you come in and say you heard this today. Thanks so much. <clears throat> Good morning, everyone. My name is Jose Zaragoza. I own a social media marketing agency and I help businesses build an online presence and help them drive new customers through the door um, by leveraging the Facebook advertising and specifically ideal your client. Uh, utilize the sales funnel, you know, email marketing, you know, help create content marketing, you know, like blog content, video marketing as well. Uh, super powerful because you're able to ideal, ideally, you know, target your, your ideal client where everyone's at right now. So. If you have any questions, let me know. I would be happy to set a one-on-one -on -one consultation or just sit down for a cup of coffee. Thanks. Third Street. <laughs> yes. Open house. Excellent. We're going to hear about that here in just a little bit again. I'm guaranteeing that. Okay. Everyone wants fudge. We're going to be coming and seeing you. Be able, to, be able to make 140 pounds of fudge. We got the kettle going. All right. Well, thank you very much, uh, new members. Let's hear it once again. All right. Now we're going to turn our focus to the showcase table. So if you have a showcase table, uh, please come on up here for just a moment, please. Uh, we're looking for Wallach and Volk. Please come up, please. And Fallman Property Group representative from modern uh, Marysville Dentistry. We're going to see that wonderful young lady again. And also Living Room Coffee House. Could you please make your way to the front of the stage, please? All right, thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, okay, we'll go ahead and start off. Uh, please introduce yourself and who you're with and what do you have to say today? What do I have to say today? Thank God nobody's breakdancing right now. Uh, Ralph Allé with the Flama Property Group. Uh, our group consists of Tina Houdon, right over here, Morgan McFalls, Todd Fallman. We're all about relationships that move you. Now who here knows a real estate broker? Show of hands. Ha! Huh. Who here loves to move? Ah. So there's, therein lies the, uh, the challenge. So we are here to make sure that is as hassle-free and smooth as possible. Here, right here in the Marysville market, we right now have 56 active listings. 86, it's all um, price categories. 86 have sold in the last uh, 30 days. Average uh, listing price is like 372 
Average sales price is 386. So we are very in tune with the local market. If you have any questions, concerns, uh, please reach out to us, Fallman Property Group, Relationships That Moved You. Thank you, Ralph. So I was just up here. Oh, just to add on a little bit, we do take all major PPO insurances. We're a network with a couple of the Delta Care USAs. We're going to see people of all ages, so bring your little ones in. Doesn't matter, one to 70. If you want to go under, under one, bring them in. We'll take a look. Um, over 70 is fine too. Okay. I apologize. I, I also have worked out of um, a sister office, so we have an orthodontist down there. So if anybody wants to head down to Linwood for orthodontics, the orthodontist works on people from 7 to 70. So I apologize. I, I kind of bottlenecked myself into that age range. Um, so any questions, come see me afterward. Thank you. Awesome. Great job. Hi, I'm Becky Mulholland. I'm with Wallach and Volk Mortgage Bankers, but I have to get in character before I do my overview. Just a second. <laughs> okay, I am really baseball, Becky. If you have never met me, please come over to my table and meet me. I look at life through the eyes of baseball, which includes the mortgage industry. So when you come for a home loan, my specialty is to get a person on first base. That is getting through the pre-approval process. You cannot score and go home unless you go to first base first. So I am really the Edgar Martinez of the mortgage industry. If you want to get pre-approved for a home loan and either hit that home run and touch first base, or you may need a little bit more coaching, please come and see me. And by the way, if you know anybody that is having a really difficult time saving money because house prices and values are going up faster than they can save it or rents going up faster than they can save money, there is a really neat, sweet program just started this month that offers 5% down payment assistance and all you really have to do is make less than 97,000 a year and you can actually buy a home for about $4,000 and I can show you how. And you don't need to be a veteran or a first time home buyer. Come see me because I would love to coach you home. Thank you. Great job, everybody. Well, thank you very much. And I seriously want you to consider visiting these great people at their showcase tables because buying a house shouldn't be like pulling teeth. And it should. <laughs> but if it is, we got that covered, too. We have everything handled up here for you. So go ahead and visit them on your way out. Ask them a bunch of questions. Thank you so much for your contribution and being here today. Thank you. Appreciate it very much. Yes, they deserve it. Baseball Becky! Thank you very, very much. That was wonderful. Great jersey, too. So now, we are moving on to the next segment of today's program. This is called Roving Mike. This is for members only. And what we're going to be doing here now is any chamber member who uses the Roving Mike time to do a kudo, all right, a testimony for another chamber member, or has an up-and-coming event such as ribbon cuttings or anything else like that they would like to share. In doing so, in the roving mic, if you come up here to give the kudo, introduce uh, yourself, tell them about a, a new event that's coming up, you get to put another business card in the gift uh, basket thing for giveaway. We got some awesome giveaways here today for those raffles. So I would invite uh, anyone who'd like to come up to uh, begin this next portion. I see we have a few people moving towards this direction. Okay, first. Thank you very much. And we have Alex from Housing Hope. Good morning, everyone. How's everyone doing today? Yes. Okay, we can, we can do better than that. There's energy in this room because there's amazing people in this room. How are we doing today? Woo! 
Fantastic, fantastic. I am extremely ex excited, as excited as all of you are, because we have an upcoming event this May, and we are looking for community leaders, such as yourselves, to join us in making it happen. Every year, Housing Hope puts together our signature event, Stone Soup, where we raise money to help families experiencing homelessness here in Stohomish County. And if you're not familiar with Housing Hope, what we do is incredible, because we work with you who are incredible. We break the cycle of poverty. Not only do we provide housing, we provide adult life skills, job training, uh, trauma-informed childcare to end poverty for families who come through our program. So we are looking for sponsors and community leaders to join with us this May, put their name on our event, and let the world know that you care about your community. So if you want to learn more about how you can support us, how you can work with us, and how you can help families, how you can change a child's life, let me know. I'll be sitting right over there. Thank you. Wow, that's fantastic. You're going to put another business card? Yes. Thank you so much, Alex. That's wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Ex absolutely. Who's next? We have Lynn Reed, Whistle Stop Sweet Shop. I'm Lynn Reed, <laughs> Whistle Stop Sweet Shop on 3rd Street. We're having our ribbon cutting on Friday, April 20th, and we do partner with the community. We also sell antiques and collectibles. My husband does a room called the Rummage Room in the back of the store. That supports our nonprofit charity that we have here in Marysville. That uh, goes for women and children who are in need. We help with housing. We help with uh, resources. We help provide them with um, classes. We can get them into detox and get them clean and sober if they're struggling with addiction. Anything you buy in the rummage room goes to support our nonprofit ministry. My husband and his collectibles keeps changing. So as soon as you buy something up in our store, he brings something else in. Even the tables that you're going to be sitting at, if you like it, you get to leave with it. You can buy our tables as well. So he stays busy doing that. So we're, we're excited to have you guys all come in and check us out. Wow. Thank you so much, Lynn. Do you have a business card? All right. Well, we'll get another one from him. Okay. Next, we have Tamar Burns Honk. Tamar Burns, Life Impact Chiropractic. You know, I got something right here. I'm gonna show <laughs> I just want to announce that we are also having a ribbon cutting on the 17th, Tuesday, yes. and it's at 4 o'clock. And we just invite everybody to come out and help us support our 10th year anniversary. Oh. So that's pretty much what we're doing. And we're going to have a cake cutting and ribbon cutting and a celebration with all of our clients as well as our community and our neighbors surrounding. So come on by and, uh, and celebrate with us. We will certainly do so. We love to party. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. All right, Kim Thompson. Thank you, Todd. Hello, I'm Kim Thompson with Prime Lending. And at Prime Lending, we make the home loan process simple. Our tagline is home loans made simple. We are located here in Marysville on Cedar. Today, instead of telling you about all the wonderful products that we have that can help you buy, build, or refinance, or renovate your home, I'm going to talk about Swap for a Cause. There are flyers on your table, and it is for a fundraiser for Eagle Wings Disabilities Ministries. They are a 501c3. They're located here in Marysville, and they help adults with disabilities have opportunities to get out and have fun and be in community with other adults with disabilities. So this is a great opportunity if you are spring cleaning and you have some accessories that are lightly used or new that you'd like to donate, please let me know. We'll be glad to pick them up from you. We're looking for scarves or shoes or purses, jewelry. It's a great time. Tickets are $25. You can see me afterwards if you have questions about tickets or donations or how you can support Eagle Wings. Thank you so much. Kim Thompson with Prime Lending, Home Loans Made Simple. That is wonderful, Kim. Now I know what to do with all those extra stuff in my closet. Or, or if your wife needs a little help. Well, yeah, that just means I have to buy more, so thanks. You have scarves and purses. Uh, yeah, not, no, not my scarves, not my purses. <laughs> Never mind. That's a little personal. Next, who we have here is uh, Caroline O'Neill from ADT. Take it away. Hi, I have a kiddos. My name is Caroline O'Neill. I'm with ADT Security Services. Take care of small business, anything 10,000 and smaller, um, also residential. My kudos is I went to the living room coffee house after talking to Brandon um, at the last meeting, and he was telling me that they were having a jazz thing that night. I'm fairly new in town. I've been here about six months, and I thought this will give me a chance to get out and meet some people. And I witnessed him, a kid dropped their drink, and he rushed over and 
told him it was okay, and he came back with drinks for the family. I thought it was very sweet. So um, the Living Room Coffee House, I just love you guys. We love the Living Room Coffee House as well. Thank you very much for that kudo. Appreciate that. Renee James, emissary here at the chamber. And what do you have for us today? I've got two things. Um, Renee James, I'm with Hometown Value Savings Magazine, but I want to uh, give a plug for an upcoming event. I'm with the Marysville Serve Optimist, which is a service organization that looks for opportunities to help women and girls in our community as well as internationally. So we have a Bunko Night coming up, and Bunko is for men and women. We have a great time, and it really, it's a no-brainer game. You just have to be able to roll dice and count. And it's a lot of fun. Um, we just have a great time, and there's always good food. So that's coming up April 26th. If you're interested, let me know. Tickets are 25, and again, it goes. To, it's a, one of our um, fundraising opportunities. So we'd love that. The other thing is, I want to give a plug for this guy. Just went with Mark and I and some friends. We went to the escape room, immersion escape room. What a ton of fun! An hour of just intense detail. The detail is amazing in the in his escape room. And um, we made it out just barely, but we did it. Lots of surprises. It was really, really well done. And I'm really excited because he's got another room he's opening up. So I'm going to pass it to you. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> so uh, one thing I just wanted to mention, every month we do something called Cash, or what is it? cash for Clues. Um, basically, we pick one charitable organization. We're getting emails here and there. But once a month, we're going to give them a special code, which gives them a discount which gives whoever uses that code a discount for the escape room. And a percentage of that's going back to them. And then we also have a cash donation jar where 100% of those proceeds go to that same organization for that entire month. So if anybody has, organi I know I'm opening the floodgates here. <laughs> if anybody knows anything, um, we, we pick one out every month and we'll do that as long as we stay in business. So yeah. And that'll be forever. Forever, yes. forever and ever. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yeah, put in an additional card. Last call for roving Mike. Going once, going twice. Okay, wait a minute. Okay, here's just handshake. I'm going to move over here. We're going to move on to the next part to the program. We have raffle prizes. It's always good to win on Fridays, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Rudy Casino, it's all about winning. Come on. So if you do have a raffle prize, uh, can a representative giving away the door prize please make their way to the stage? And I'm going to have Kim help me here, uh, and Renee if you would like to as well. Uh, come in front and help us hand out the uh, prizes. So welcome. You are first. I don't have a name tag, so That's okay. unofficial. Hi, everyone. Um, good morning. I'm Tracy Banfield. I'm the director of sales here at Tulalip Resort. Uh, Ken Kettler, who you'd normally hear from, decided to take vacation this week, so you guys are stuck with me. Uh, but the good news is I do have a giveaway. So we're doing a, a $50 gift certificate to Cedars, but really quickly I just wanted to tell you about a couple of upcoming events that we have in our ballroom. Um, Herman's Hermits, has anybody heard of that? All right. Um, I'm not familiar myself, but I hear they're excellent. They're coming in on Saturday, April 7th. Um, we have the Off Color Comedy Tour with Sean Wayans, David Allen Greer, and Tommy Davidson coming in on Saturday, April 21st. Lone Star, any Lone Star fans out there? Uh, May 11th, Sugar Ray, Sugar Ray, yay? Yeah, all right, we got a couple. Friday, April, or excuse me, May 25th. Freedom, which is a tribute to George Michael and Wham. And then we have Purple Experience was a tribute to Prince. George Michael and Wham is on June 15th, and Prince is on Saturday, June 16th. So that'll be a fun weekend if anybody wants to come up to Tulalip. Yes, all that good stuff. So we actually also have our summer concert series, which will be announced um, in the middle of April, which, believe it or not, is in about two weeks. So watch out for our website for those announcements of all those shows. So you're going to pull up the winner. You're going to make the announcement. Okay, so we're going to do a uh, drawing again for $50 at Cedars Restaurant. Shake them up here. The HR product, or project, I'm sorry. This is for the um, sweet shop. Sweet shop. What is that? Whistle stop sweet shop on go. third in Marysville. <laughs> sorry, yes. Yeah, so it's you not very on much. here. Congratulations. Look at this. Next. 
please call, uh, introduce yourself, who you're with, and your prize. Perfect. Hello, I'm Tina Hudon with the Fallman Property Group, Realty One, and I just wanted to tell you about some of the specials that we have in hometown values um, that we have for both buyers and sellers. So if you uh, find the magazine for um, this spring, check out. We have $300 credit towards sellers and $300 credit towards buyers of your choice. And we have a great gift. We weren't as creative as last time where we had jingle, jingle, the spring. <laughs> <laughs> but we do have a nice door prize of $25 to go spend on whatever you like um, this weekend and have have a fun weekend. All right. Where is it to? And it is Washington State Association of Plumbers and Steam Fitters, Derek Drake. Derek. Here. All right. So that $25 cash, is that going to go in your pocket or into the casino? No. Oh, there we go. Good luck. Good luck. Good luck. Next. Good morning again, Renee James with Hometown Value Savings Magazine. We are a direct mail publication that mails to 30,000 addresses here locally. So if you're trying to reach that local community to bring them in the business, to let them know what you've got going on, maybe a grand opening, maybe a menu change, maybe you're seasonal, whatever the message is, we can help get that out to 30,000 individuals. So we invite you to grab a copy of the magazine on the way out. And I have a door prize. Hopefully, we'll be seeing some sunshine soon, and you can use this. It is for a, a round of golf at Glen Eagle Golf Course. Carolyn O'Neill with ADT. Well, that wraps up my end of uh, uh, my portion of the program. I'd like to welcome back to the stage our director, chairman, Jack Schumacher. Everybody. Thank you, Todd. And I uh, wanted to give some other thank yous. And, and first of all, welcome to all of our new members. So it's great to have you a part of the chamber. Um, I want to thank today's sponsors, Snow Owl Libraries and, and John Lynn Wolf Ivory. I want to thank all the volunteers to the chamber and, and all the emissaries. And thanks uh, to the Tulalip Resort. You've done another great job of providing a great breakfast and a great venue. And a big thanks to all the chamber members. I really appreciate all of, all of your participation. Um, I do want to remind you that uh, Andrew Ballard will uh, stick around for a while. And I believe John Lynn Wolf Ivory will, if you would uh, like to ask questions. Andrew will have business cards up here if you uh, want to get the uh, email address and, and get your free PowerPoint presentation. Upcoming events, and we did say we would uh, uh, remind people of this, Life Impact Chiropractic Anniversary Celebration is Tuesday, April 17th at 4 p.m. Whistle Stop Sweet Shop Ribbon Cutting, April 20th, 4 p.m. And I believe that's on 3rd Street, but uh, I'm not sure. Uh, April Business Before Hours, April 27th, the program will be State of the, State of the County Office of the Neighborhoods. And the uh, Mega Mexer will be Thursday, May 10th at the Marysville Opera House from 5 to 7. I want to thank you again for coming today and hope to see you next month. Thank you.